each other. In the presence of a black hole, one member of a pair of virtual particles may fall into the hole, leaving the other member without a partner with which to annihilate. The forsaken particle appears to be radiation emitted by the black hole. And so, black holes are not eternal. They evaporate away at an increasing rate until they vanish in a gigantic explosion. Quantum mechanics has allowed particles and radiation to escape from the ultimate prison, a black hole. Einstein never accepted quantum mechanics because of its element of chance and uncertainty. He said, God does not play dice. It seems that Einstein was doubly wrong. The quantum effects of black holes suggest that not only does God play dice, he sometimes throws them where they cannot be seen. He says himself that uh, he wouldn't have got where he is if he hadn't been ill. And I think that's quite possible because it's like Johnson said, you know, knowledge that you're to be hanged in the morning concentrates the mind wonderfully. And he has concentrated on this in a way that I don't think he would have done because he always took a great interest in a lot of things in life. And I don't know that he'd have applied himself quite the same way if he'd been able to get around as he used to. So in a way, no, I can't think anyone's lucky to be having an illness like that even so. But it's less bad luck for him than it would be for some people because he's any because he can so much live in his head. When I lived with the Hawking family, I would usually get up around 7.15 or 7.30 and take a shower and then read my Bible some in the, in, in the morning and pray. And then I would go down at 8.15 to get Stephen up. And then at breakfast, I would often tell him what I'd been, what I'd been reading in the Bible, hoping that you know, maybe this would eventually have some influence. So then we would go into work and usually would we'd go in and see if there were any scientific papers that people sent out. And I did discover that despite Hawking's great brilliance, he does read quite slowly. I mean, he, I could read about twice as fast as he. But of course, the, the point is he would have to read to remember it because it would be very difficult for him to go back and access the, the, the thing. Whereas I could skim the paper rather quickly and say, is there something interesting in this? If I wanted to work on it, I could pick the thing up and look at it. Black hole radiation has shown us that gravitational collapse is not as final as we once thought. If an astronaut falls into a black hole, he will be returned to the rest of the universe in the form of radiation. Thus, in a sense, the astronaut will be recycled. However, it would be a poor sort of immortality because any personal concept of time would come to an end as he is torn apart inside the black hole. All that would survive would be his mass or energy. One year, the Hawkings took me along when we went to a cottage in, in Wales near the River Hawaii. And this cottage was up a hill and there, there was a bit of a, a paved little sidewalk that, that went up to the cottage, which I had not been up and, and of course I wanted to do it in the least number of trips that I could imagine. So we put Stephen's batteries under his chair, I mean his wheelchair has space for batteries, and put extra batteries under there, which we, Stephen didn't realize he had that I'd put under there, so he didn't realize this wheelchair was as heavily laden as possible. So Stephen got quite a bit ahead of me and then he was turning the corner to go into around to his house, but that was on a slope. and and. So I looked up and I noticed Stephen's wheelchair was slowly tipping backward. And of course, I was about to 10 meters away and <laughs> tried to run up there, but he, I was not able to get there nearly rapidly enough before he toppled over backward into the bushes. And so it was a bit of a, bit of a shocking sight to see this master of gravity getting overcome by the weak gravitational force of Earth. <laughs> 
one of the worst things for me would be having people there all the time, I'm never alone. I mean, I couldn't bear that. And uh, yet he finds things funny, and he enjoys life, and he goes dashing about all over the place. And I think this is tremendous. And, uh, but it's a sort of courage that I haven't got, and his father hadn't got it. And we cannot but admire it, but wonder how on earth he got it, <laughs> really. There must have been 50 people there. And uh, I was standing off in a corner, sort of uh, uh, watching uh, quietly for a few minutes, relaxing. And uh, Stephen was over there not far from me. Jane walked over to Stephen and looked at him, and he was sitting there with his head in his lap, like only Stephen can put his head in his lap. And uh, Jane uh, said to Stephen, You look miserable, Stephen. Sit up straight. Some of your guests don't understand that you're sitting there thinking about physics and having a wonderful time. It looks like you're in pain. Sit up straight and go talk to your guests. In 1979, I was selected location professor of mathematics. This is the same chair once held by Isaac Newton. They have a big book which every university teaching officer is supposed to sign. After I had been location professor for about a year, they realized I had never signed. So they brought a book to my office, and I signed with some difficulty. That was the last time I signed my name. My interest in the origin and fate of the universe was reawakened when I attended a conference on cosmology in the Vatican. Afterwards, we were granted an audience with the Pope. He told us that it was all right to study the evolution of the universe after the Big Bang, but we should not inquire into the Big Bang itself because that was the moment of creation, and therefore, the work of God. I was glad that he did not know the subject of the talk I had just given. The possibility that the universe had no beginning, no moment of creation, There were theories in the early 70s, in fact the first type of creation theories, where the, the people concerned started off with a fixed external space and time, which, as it were, for eternity was empty. And then suddenly, for some unknown reason, the universe nucleates at a particular point, and then bang, it blows apart. But the trouble is that when space and time appear in the classical theory, the actual point itself is a singular point in the mathematics. The mathematics breaks down, and so you come